According to the American Institute of Architects, the Foundation Building is located in the villages in the neighborhood of Esther Place, Noho, and Enveron, right by the East Village. According to the Historic District Designation Report on NYC.gov, Noho began as farmland. As the area began to urbanize in the 1830s and became accessible to horse-drawn carriages along the Bowery, it became the most fashionable district in New York City. Federal style and Greek Revival style houses were built there. In the 1830s through 1850s, larger institutions such as churches, schools, and libraries moved into the area, and it was at this time that the foundation building was built. The use of cast iron facades became popular in the area at that time as well. Check it out at 7 East 7th Street. The Cooper Union was founded by Peter Cooper. Cooper wanted to create a free school where people of every race, gender, and religion would be welcome to learn. Cooper became wealthy in the glue and iron industries. His personal philosophy was one of tolerance and social progressivism, and he imbued his school with it. He commissioned construction for the foundation building to begin in 1853, and the construction was completed in 1859. The architect of the foundation building was Fred A. Peterson. Peterson was born in 1808 in Prussia. He was involved in the German Revolution in 1848 and came to America as a political refugee. He invented a hollow fireproof brick tile which he patented in 1855 and used in the construction of the foundation building. He went on to become one of the founders of the American Institute of Architects. The foundation of building is in the Italianate style. The Italianate style was popular in America from the 1850s to 1870s, mostly in homes. It came to America from England, and it was a less formal and more picturesque style than the orderly classical and renaissance styles, and it sometimes featured an asymmetrically placed tower. It replaced the Gothic Revival as the most popular romantic style in America. The style is very apparent in the foundation building. The flat top and frieze of very small attic windows in the original design are characteristic of Italianate architecture. Adjoining arched windows feature prominently in the facade. Logia. Logia is a fancy term for an Italianate architectural feature, which basically is a long porch along the side of a building, which is open and supported with columns or rounded arches on one side. The foundation building has two logias. One is on the north end and the other on the south end. Hood molding. That's molding above an arch that projects outward and follows the curve of the arch. The foundation building also has heavily molded doors, which are characteristic of the Italianate style. The structural system of the foundation building was steel framing, exterior bearing wall, reinforced concrete slab, and vaulted composite floor. It was the first building in New York City to use rolled iron eye beams for support. These beams were invented by Peter Cooper himself. Increased usage of these beams led to the invention of the modern skyscraper. The great hall in the basement is supported by Doris columns. The exterior is made from brownstone with wood casement windows and cast iron columns. The interior has vinyl asbestos tile floors, quarry tile, wood, carpeting, plaster ceilings, and plaster enclosed walls. The foundation building has several architectural innovations. Peter Cooper had a round shaft built inside the building to transport goods by pulley. This turned out to be a forerunner of the modern elevator, and an elevator was indeed later installed in the shaft. The foundation building features two significant firsts in its construction. Rolled iron I-beams were invented by Peter Cooper. The foundation building was the first building to use them, making it the forerunner of the modern skyscraper, which would not have been possible without steel I-beams. Hollow fireproof brick tile was invented and patented by the architect Peterson. In the basement level of the foundation building is the Great Hall. The Great Hall was designed to be a place for people to come together and share ideas and learn new things. It has Doric columns. There are no windows because it is below ground, so there is no natural light in the Great Hall. We were informed of this by the security guards who graciously allowed us to take pictures in the lobby, but did not allow us to go down to the Great Hall because it was dark. The Cooper Union began as a free adult education program. It was heavily influenced by its founder, Peter Cooper, who believed in the value of educating anyone who was willing and able to learn. The Cooper Union was supported originally by the retail shops located on the first two floors of the building, 
as well as by rent from the land beneath the Chrysler building. The shops are no longer in operation and have been converted into a library, but the school as it is today is still supported heavily by the income from leasing the land beneath the Chrysler building. Much of the history of the Foundation building comes from the events that took place in the Great Hall. This reflects the original intent of the Great Hall, as well as Peter Cooper's socially progressive ideas. In 1860, then presidential candidate Abraham Lincoln gave his famous Right Makes Might speech in the Great Hall. The speech elaborated on Lincoln's views on slavery. A Lincoln scholar named Harold Coulter said, At the Cooper Union, Lincoln became more than a regional curiosity. He became a national leader. Other famous speakers at the Foundation Building include Presidents Grant, Cleveland, Taft, Theodore Roosevelt, and Obama before they were elected, as well as Presidents Wilson, Clinton, and Obama while in office, and Mark Twain, Susan B. Anthony, and many others. These events were attended by members of the public who were able to take advantage of the free offerings from the Cooper Union. Originally, the foundation building was only five stories high, with a flat top characteristic of the Italianate architectural style. So clearly it had to be renovated, duh! A later alteration, which was much needed, gave it additional floors, skylights, and a clock the foundation building, it was, you know, landmark in 1966. The Landmark Preservation Commission, it cites the foundation's exemplary Italianate style, the innovation of uh, Peter Cooper's road I beams, and the, the historical significance of the Cooper Union and uh, what it stands for as the main reason for landmarking the building. In 1974, a major renovation of the Cooper Union Foundation Building was completed. A New York Times article about the renovation said that, like a dollar too proud for a facelift, but in need of support, the Cooper Union Foundation Building has done a 20th century version of the car sat and hoop skirt. An article by James Golden said about the then 119-year-old building that it had undergone medical surgery to implement a 20th century interior into its 19th century shell. The foundation building's renovation made the headlines. It was designed by the head of Cooper Union's own architecture division, Professor John Hedgeduck. The renovation aimed to leave the exterior looking original, but to redesign the interior. All structural framing was covered in fireproof material. The Cooper Union is still an educational institution devoted to social rights and progressivism. It has schools for architecture, art, and engineering. Inside the lobby of the Foundation Building is a scale model of the building's architecture. We appreciate the idea of free education and cooperation. We also like the fact that the facade was preserved over time because it preserves the history and beauty of the building. It is still possible to imagine the original storefronts in the windows. The building still performs the same function now. The same ideals that inspired Peter Cooper continue to educate people today, and that's a beautiful thing. The only design change that we would make to the building would be to raise the Great Hall so that it is above ground enough to have windows. A public meeting space should be visible to the public, and windows would make the space lighter and airier, and allow visitors who arrive after classes are over to actually see the Great Hall. 